In this exercise, we're going to take these three disparate paths that we drew with the arc tool and modified as well with the white arrow tool. And we're going to join them into a single half a heart. And we're going to do it using a feature that has been greatly enhanced inside of Illustrator CS5. So I've gone ahead and saved my progress as my better half.ai found inside the 04 line art folder. I'm going to press control semicolon or command semicolon on the Mac to hide the guidelines because they're getting in my face right now. I want a clear look at my heart. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to the selection tool, the black arrow tool. And I'm going to drag this arc away from the others so that you can see that we have three independent paths at this point. What I really want is a continuous path because otherwise it won't stroke correctly. We won't be able to fill it correctly and so on. So I'll press control Z, command Z on the Mac to undo that modification. Now in the old days, that is Illustrator CS4 and earlier, you used to be able to join paths by going to the white arrow tool. And then you had to marquee around two anchor points like so. And then you would either choose the join command, which we'll see in a moment, or you would go up here to the control panel and you would click on connect selected endpoints, which you can still do. However, it's a fair amount of work because you have to do it for each pair of points. What we can do now using the black arrow tool, you can just go ahead and marquee around the various paths that you want to select. And notice I just drew a partial marquee. I'm not trying to enclose every bit of each and every path. I'm just trying to get parts of each path. And that selects all three paths, as you can see. And now you can go up to the object menu, choose path and choose join. This command used to require two selected endpoints. Otherwise, it would absolutely complain up a storm. You would not believe it. Such a pain in the neck this command has been for the last 23 years. Now, if you choose the command to press Control J, Command J on a Mac, it just works. Now, it didn't even bother to tell me it did anything, but it did do something. I'll go here to the Direct Selection tool, click off the shape, move my cursor over so I can see there's an anchor point below it. Notice I have a blue anchor point below, and I also have that little hollow square next to the cursor. I'll click, and I've got a point selected, obviously. I'll drag it around. It's fused together. Awesome. Control Z, Command Z to undo that movement. Let's drag this guy around. That worked too. Incredible. Control Z, Command Z. So we have now just one, two, three, four anchor points inside of one smooth, continuous, fluid path. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and grab my black arrow tool once again, and I'm going to click anywhere on this path outline to select it. And notice at this point, according to my color panel, which you bring up, by the way, by going to the window menu and choosing color or pressing the F6 key, notice that I'm seeing the fill of my path is transparent, and yours should be as well. If it's not, go ahead and click on this none icon right there. And your stroke, which you can get to by clicking on the stroke, is set to a K value of 100. Cyan, magenta, and yellow are all zero, meaning that it's a weak black. I don't care about that right now. We'll deal with rich versus weak blacks later. But for now, I know that I've got a black stroke, a transparent fill. I want to make that stroke thicker. And a stroke is the outline of the path, in case that's not evident. I'm going to change this stroke value right here by clicking this down pointing arrowhead, bringing up the pop-up menu, and choosing 10 point like so, up in the control panel. And I get a nice thick stroke as you see here. Now what I want to do is flip this left half of the art in order to create a right half, and then join those two halves together, and we'll do exactly that in the very next exercise.